What's up guys, it is IRGT85, happy Thursday, but of course we got some video game news to talk about. We actually have a lot of stories I want to cover in today's video, so we're going to skip the intro. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to like and share the video, also hit that subscribe button. But without any further ado, let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games, and we're going to start things off with two big game delays for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. Now these two games were supposed to come out in 2021, one is still coming out in 2021, but one has been delayed until February of 2022 which is quickly shaping up to be an insane month for new video game releases like i think that's a good thing though you usually don't have a whole hell of a lot going on in the first few months of the year as far as big releases are concerned so it's nice that companies are now sort of exploring this earlier launch lineup for the beginning of years because it gives people something to talk about and more importantly it gives people something to play now the first game we're going to talk about is dying light to stay human now this game was originally supposed to come out on december 7th of 2021 and now it has been delayed until February 4th of 2022 for the Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. Now, what's interesting about Dying Light is, I don't know anything about this franchise. Like, I never played the original game. I know a lot of people seem to be looking forward to Dying Light 2, so maybe I sort of missed out on playing the original game. But the original game is actually releasing on the Nintendo Switch, and so I will end up picking up that game and reviewing it for you guys. And I know what you're saying, RGT. You're such a Switch shill. All you talk about is Nintendo stuff on this channel. Why wouldn't you just buy the game for the PlayStation or the Xbox, the original game, pay a fraction of the price, and then talk about it in a video? Because I look at things from a business perspective, and let's be realistic, if I make a video tomorrow talking about Dying Light for the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One, no, no one's gonna care. If I talk about the Nintendo Switch version of the game, people will care and people will watch that video. So, I mean, I keep it real. I'm trying to make money here on YouTube. I'm trying to get people people to watch the videos so that is a way for people to watch that video so I will be checking out Dying Light 1 if I like that game maybe I will check out Dying Light 2 in the February month of 2022 as now that game will be releasing on February 4th the next game is actually a game that was not delayed until 2022 but it did get delayed about a month and that is Battlefield 2042 now I'm actually looking forward to this game I'm sort of over the Call of Duty stuff I used to really enjoy Battlefield uh, 2 I think it was was back on the Xbox 360 I don't really recall which battlefield it was but I remember I would like run around with like a little drill and like drill holes in walls and like try to kill people with the drill I just love the freedom that that game offered and battlefield 2042 definitely looks to expand upon that this game will now be releasing on November 19th for the PlayStation Xbox and PC so once again another bit of a delay this is only a one month delay though so I don't think it's necessarily as bad as something like we've seen with Horizon Forbidden West and dying light 2 which we just talked about but still it you know it's an annoying thing to deal with game delays you kind of psych yourself up for when these games are coming out you sort of plan like what you're going to be playing and then when you get so close to the release date and then it gets delayed again it's kind of a pain in the ass but really it's not a big deal at the end of the day there's still going to be plenty of stuff to play in 2021 if you were looking forward to these games just you'll have to be a little bit more patient with them so let me know in the comment section down below what you think of dying light 2 and battlefield 2042 getting delayed how that's going to impact your gaming or i mean do you even care and if not no i'm sorry sorry i didn't enjoy this segment Next up, we've been talking a lot about the Nintendo Switch price drop that recently just happened in the UK and in Europe. Now, we talked about it Sunday. It was essentially a rumor. Monday, it was confirmed. So a lot of things are coming from this situation now because of the fact that, yes, the Nintendo Switch base model is getting a price drop in the Europe and the UK. And so in these regions, you'll be able to pick up a Nintendo Switch for much cheaper as far as the base model is concerned instead of the OLED model or the Nintendo Switch Lite. Now, one thing I've been talking a lot about is I don't feel that this is going to be just region locked to just the UK. I feel like Nintendo is going to expand upon this in other regions. Now, Stephen Toledo, who I believe used to be head of Kotaku, actually made a tweet the other day talking about this situation and actually talked to Nintendo about what was happening with the Switch in the United States. And he went on to say the following, the trade price adjustment is for the European region only. There are no plans to change the MSRP for any Nintendo Switch model in the US. 
Now, upon the surface level, you know, you could just say, oh, well, Nintendo said no price drop in the U.S. That makes sense. Move on along and carry on. But I, I don't necessarily believe that just for a multitude of reasons. The first thing is Nintendo's lied to the media before when things were happening. Remember the whole new 3DS situation where they told IGN there was no new 3DS? And then literally the next day, a new 3DS was announced and revealed. This is a situation where if Nintendo came out and said, yeah, you know, we're going to do a price drop on the base model for the Nintendo Switch in the U.S., like people wouldn't buy a Nintendo Switch. They would simply just wait for October or November, more than likely November, when this would take place and pick up the system at a discounted price, thus making Nintendo lose money. So to come out and say, no, we're not doing a price drop is what any business would do, especially if it hasn't been announced. And that just sort of makes sense to me. Do I think Nintendo will do a price drop in the US? I definitely think they will. I fully expect there to be a lot of sales for Nintendo Switches in the month of November because of things like Black Friday. But I I think that around that time frame is when you're going to see an official price drop on the Nintendo Switch base model, especially considering the fact that they're going to be promoting the OLED model. That's sort of the model going forward in the future with that mysterious dock that we talked about yesterday. A lot of secrets seem to be held within that dock. And of course, if you buy a baseline model, you can always purchase the upgraded dock at any point in time. So it would make sense for Nintendo to drop the price of the Switch base model in the US. And I definitely think it's going to happen. So officially it's not happening but behind the scenes i definitely for expect this to be happening and i definitely think around the month of november we will see a price drop for the base model of the switch in the u.s and finally we are all expecting the game boy and the game boy color to be announced well, any day now for the Nintendo Switch's online service. It's been two years since the SNES came to the service. Of course, more than likely, Nintendo is doing a Nintendo Direct in the month of September to talk about the holiday lineup of games and the first quarter of 2022 games. So a lot of people are expecting this to be involved with the Nintendo Direct presentation. Nintendo will probably do something like stealth drop it during the presentation and do a little thing and say, hey, now Game Boy and Game Boy Color games are going to be here, or they'll do it shortly thereafter whenever they do their presentation. But now, we're talking about N64. Now, there's been some rumors about the N64 coming to the Nintendo Switch's online service, much like we've seen with the NES and the Super NES. And really, I mean, it makes sense. You got to remember the emulation, of course, was done on the Wii U. They can simply use that same emulation. There was stuff found within source code of Nintendo Switch firmware updates that involved things like multiple games that were involved in the N64 that was found in the source code. Some people thought that maybe it was just leftover stuff from previous games, such as the Wii U entries. Some people thought it was something new, but I mean, there's been lots of rumors and murmurs about this, but now a new report went out yesterday from, I mean, really two of the biggest frauds in the video game industry, Nate the Hate and MVG. First off, how can you believe anything that MVG says? The man says he's from Australia when he's clearly from Britain. Like, I don't even understand like how he's making a name for himself. He's a British man. He's an English man. Embrace it, MVG. Like, it's a cool place, you know? Pip pip cheerio, you know, fish and chips, stuff like that. And then Nate the Hate, the man won't even show his face because he knows that people might smack him if he's out in public because he's been wrong about so much stuff. I'm obviously just messing around here. These two are my homies. Obviously, they know a lot of things. MVG makes video games. Like, if you're playing Quake on any platform, thank MVG for that. And Nate the Hate has told me many things off the record behind the scenes that ended up becoming true, including some stuff that made literally no sense to happen ended up happening so i believe in both of these individuals and they did their podcast yesterday i'll have a link to it in the description box down below make sure you guys check it out throw them a subscription as well but basically they seem to be saying that the n64 could be coming to the nintendo switch but it's not going to be involved with the baseline switch online service right now there's actually going to be a premium tier that will include the n64 now this is just sort of speculation but usually when nate talks about something he talks about it for a reason because he's heard something or seen something and so I could kind of believe this would be something that was happening because of the fact that I think Nintendo needs to take the Nintendo Switch Online service a hell of a lot more serious there's so much potential for it and this little drip feed of just random games whenever seems so silly when Nintendo has the largest back catalog of games to choose from to put on the Nintendo Switch service like the virtual console did great the virtual console had a ton of games on there that you could purchase from and they had all sorts of systems 
systems. So I could see this happening. And I do think that if we do see this integrated, that Nintendo would want to do it in a higher price tier. And once again, that makes sense. You have your baseline tier for if you just want to play some of the baseline stuff. And then you could have premium features added into the Nintendo Switch's online service for this higher tier, including N64 games that would make people want to upgrade their service. I mean, I would do it on day one. I want more from the service. When you look at things like PlayStation services and of course Xbox Lives, they are light years better than what we're getting on the Nintendo Switch. But the main thing that people always say is, oh, well, the Nintendo Switch's online service is cheaper. Like that doesn't necessarily mean that it's like better because it's cheaper because it's not better. I would rather pay more for something and get more for my buck than just pay less for something and not really get a great valuable experience. So could the N64 be coming to the Nintendo Switch's online service with a higher tier price model? If it does happen, I mean, I'm cool with it. Like, I don't care. I will definitely sign up for this higher price tier because I want more out of my Nintendo Switch. I love the games that come to it, but I love my back catalog of games too. And it's a hell of a lot easier to play these games on one system than to dig out my N64 and then plug in an Eon adapter or plug in, you know, the uh, Retro Tink 5X and then set all that stuff up. Like, I like doing that, but I would definitely prefer to play them on my Switch. So N64 to the Nintendo Switch's online service. Maybe they'll do both. Maybe they'll do the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color, and then they'll do the N64 and then introduce this premium tier. I don't know. There's a lot of speculation going on about it. Let me know in the comment section down below, though, would you be willing to pay for a higher price online Nintendo Switch service if you got more bang for your buck with things like N64 games? Alrighty, so that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to give me your feedback on all the topics in the comment section down below. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to like and share the video as well. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.